Welcome to indoor water efficiency. Today we will be providing an overview on the importance of water efficiency as it applies to the built environment. This will include a comparison of the per capita water usage for US, Canada, and other countries, and an explanation of EPA water requirements for indoor water efficiency as it applies to LEED 2009 projects. We will analyze water efficiency strategies, technologies, and conservation measures that can be employed on green building projects for enhanced water efficiency and thereby achieve LEED credits for water efficiency. We will walk you through sample LEED calculations to document water savings. This course will also provide an overview of water efficiency incentives, tax rebates, etc. for green buildings. We will look at case studies for new construction, existing buildings, and commercial interiors. It is also important for us to define water efficiency. The terms water conservation and water efficiency are often confused. Water conservation is the judicious use of water, using just the amount of water that we need without wasting and finding ways to reduce our needs. The effectiveness of water conservation depends on a person's awareness, education, and behavior. Water efficiency is technology oriented and indicates appliances or fixtures which can be designed for the same purpose as conventional models but use less water. This is a relatively new term in comparison to conservation. You can see water efficiency closely related with green buildings. Water conservation coupled with efficiency will be an ideal solution and LEED and other green building rating systems address both of these fronts. Rainwater harvesting is the collecting, accumulating, and storage of rainwater for future use. Rainwater can be used as gray water to flush toilets, farm, irrigate, and to recharge aquifers. For this presentation, we'll discuss using rainwater collected from the roofs of buildings, generally for use in landscape irrigation. In order to determine what type of catch to use, you will need to do some simple calculations to determine how much rainfall you can expect. You will need to determine the total roof area as well as the amount of rain to expect. When calculating roof area, you should look at the footprint of the roof and its protrusions rather than at the surface area of the roof. If you view the on-demand version of this presentation, the link on this slide will take you to a site that provides information on rainfall levels throughout the U.S. Rainwater systems are simple to construct, usually from readily available and inexpensive local materials. Many hardware and garden stores carry rain barrels and other collection devices, or you can create custom solutions for your project. Using collected rainwater for landscaping, flushing toilets, or cleaning can reduce your potable water consumption. This will contribute towards all WE credits on a LEED project. Some states or regions, such as Colorado, do not allow rainwater collection due to impact on groundwater levels, so make sure to check with local codes before planning on this strategy. The image on this slide is the Chesapeake Bay Foundation's Merrill Environmental Center in Annapolis, Maryland. The building uses extensive rainwater harvesting, allow it to, allowing it to consume no additional water for outdoor use. Gray water reuse is another strategy that projects can implement to reduce potable water consumption. Gray water may be used for cleaning, irrigation, and other outdoor uses, or for mechanical cooling. Projects considering gray water reuse should include provisions for dual plumbing to keep gray water and black water separate. Our research of more than 100 lead projects around the U.S. found that the main inhibition of projects considering gray water reuse is the cost of dual plumbing and local regulations. Just like rainwater reuse, gray water reuse can reduce potable water consumption in lead projects, and it also helps in reducing wastewater generation, having a positive effect on all WE credits. Condensate recovery is an area that a lot of existing building projects are looking at. Almost every commercial building in North America is air conditioned, and more than 90% of them will have cooling. During the cooling cycle, air passes through the chilled cooling coils in the air handling units prior to entering the facilities. 
When the weather is hot and humid, condensation forms rapidly as air passes over the cooled coils, collecting moisture from the air onto the cooled coils. This moisture can be collected into a pan below the unit. Depending on the size of your facility and your air handling unit, you can collect a lot of water this way. You can use this condensate for various purposes such as landscape irrigation, flushing toilets, cleaning cars and equipment, and even for cooling towers. Condensate recovery can be especially effective in more hot and humid climates. The San Antonio Public Library, for example, collects about 1,400 gallons of condensate per day, which is used for irrigation. In the final section, we'll take a look at three case studies representing new construction, existing buildings, and commercial interiors. These will provide information about the performance, economics, and success of water efficiency projects. The Proximity Hotel in Greensboro, North Carolina. This four diamond rated hotel is the first hotel in the nation to achieve LEED Platinum under NC version 2.2. They managed to achieve 55 out of a possible 69 points. The hotel has 5,000 square feet of conference and event space and a full service restaurant. The highlights of their scoreboard are 39% less energy use, 34% less water use, and 87% construction waste diversion when compared with a similar building. The project has achieved four out of five points available under water efficiency.